So hello, Dr. Falaroni. Um, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out to talk to us students about family medicine. Um, so good morning. <laughs> So I would actually like to start off by asking you, before we get into family medicine specifically, why you chose medicine? Like why healthcare? What attracted you to healthcare? Yeah, it's it's kind of a cliche answer, but you know, um, kind of at a young age, I felt that um, I felt that there was a lot of need for people who um, needed to be supported and to have. Um, And I always had an interest in more of the science part of things. So I thought that healthcare and medicine would be an opportunity for me to combine my interest in science with my interest in um, trying to help people to help people live healthier lives. Absolutely. And I think um, the science courses in our school really do help to like you know, spark that interest into whether you really want to go into healthcare or not. Yeah. Um, and so going along the same lines, what do you think are some personal characteristics? So other than academic interests, what do you think are some personal characteristics that someone going into healthcare, especially family medicine, would need? Yeah. Um, so, you know, outside of a desire to um, to help people and to have um, kind of more of a of an appreciation for the for um, I think some ca characteristics would be um, to have a really strong um, kind of sense of direction for a lack of a better word a sense of direction as to where you see yourself in the big picture because. Um, medicine and healthcare and the training that you go through to get to be a physician. Um, I think that, you know, if you're a really smart, really hardworking person, you'll do fine with the, the class. It is sometimes um, easy to lose sight as to where you are in the big picture because you can get really caught up in the taking the tests and doing the work. And um, so Kind of having a nice balance to really go back periodically to say, well, what kind of person am I? Because any smart person can do good in the world and any um, conscientious person can do good in the world. So you kind of have to keep reminding yourself, well, what is it about me that, yes, I'm smart and yes, I'm conscientious, but I also want to do use medicine as my tool um, today of things. Um, and then another characteristic that I thought was really clever is when I was in medical school, there was a, a gastroenterologist who made a comment um, who said, you know, being a good doctor isn't even about being smart or being really kind to people or anything like that. He said, you know, if you really want to be a good doctor, you have to develop really good habits and you have to stick with your habits. And I do see that sometimes with physicians is um, sometimes cut corners or, you know, you, you've developed these really good habits of being meticulous and being conscientious. And if you forget that those are the habits that you built your career on, sometimes that's when um, you lose sight of, you know, you, you can make medical mistakes or things could fall through the cracks. And then that's when your patient care starts to suffer a little bit. So I would say good habits, conscientious, not cutting corners, but then also being willing to periodically take time to remind yourself why you want to. Absolutely. I feel I personally agree as well. I think that those are some characteristics we should look for early on, like in high school, in order to, to like really understand if we are meant to be in healthcare. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. The next one, I think this is a very common question to ask is how does your daily work and lifestyle compare to that of like other specialities? Like why, like how does family medicine, how do, how do your hours look and like what things do you do differently than like other specialities? Mm. Yeah, um, so 
that's a tricky question because um, I haven't, uh, I don't spend a lot of time with people in other specialties outside of, you know, interfacing with patient care and when we have patients in common. And I've been in practice long enough that I think that the training aspect of healthcare has changed a little. My memories or my perception of other specialties is, is a lot of times um, colored by my memories of when I was in medical school and in residency and seeing other specialties. Um, I think that um, my day-to-day, -day, mm, on some weeks it might be shorter because some weeks my day-to-day -day work is really limited to the hours that I'm seeing patients in the clinic. So on a short day, I'm probably at work for about 10 hours. But on long days, like if a physician tries to, certain physicians, maybe like surgeons um, who have to see patients in the clinic, but also have to schedule time in the operating room, they have to maybe start earlier to go see their patients who are in the hospital, and then they have to move from the hospital to the operating room to do their cases for the day. And then in the afternoons, they may be seeing patients in the clinic. Um, and so I think that maybe some other specialties, they may have earlier morning. In some cases, um, just longer days in general. But I think physicians are trying to kind of strike a balance between um, not working, you know, 80 hours a week, week after week for the rest of our careers. I mean, medicine has always been one of those, like you're going to have your busy weeks and you're going to have your weeks that don't feel so busy. So it's kind of, you have to remind yourself on those really tough weeks that they're not all going to be like this. And you're going to have some weeks where things are a little more predictable. Absolutely. And I think with that, along with that comes the question of a lot of people, a lot of students in high school think that medical is like a lot of time devotion and they don't know for those who are who want to like family plan, um, they aren't sure how they can strike that balance. So how did you when you went into family medicine, how did you strike that balance between like personal time and work? Like, how did that work? Yeah, well, I can say that um... It was really hard during medical school and even residency to really get that perspective. It just felt like I was just like, get up at 5 a.m., come home at 6 p.m., work for 12 hours or 13 hours nonstop and um, just, you know, kind of just trudge through. Um, so medical school, I think, was not miserable, but it was tougher than my work now is. Um, and residency um, for the training after medical school, they are continuing to work really hard to not over overtax residents 60 to 80 hours a week and trying to balance, you know, you're not working for more than so many hours in a row. Um, and that, that did make it a little bit more helpful for me um, to have that. I found for me, um, and I guess this is where some, my path was a little bit different because I didn't go straight from college to medical school. I took about six years off and worked. And so by the time I started medical school, I had had a six month old. And um, so my plan of attack for medical school, like a lot of my co-students who were straight out of college treated medical school kind of like college where they would like they had a little more flexibility in their time. So they would go to class, but then they'd take some time off and then they'd study till like 11 or 12 at night. And that worked for them because they were kind of still in that college mode. But since I was already out of college, I was sort of like, I'm going to get up at 5.30 and I'm going to go into school. And whether I have a little bit of work to do or a ton of work to do, I'm just going to work solid. And then when I come home, I'm going to just like medical school like I said, like a, like a 10 hour to 11 or even some days, a 12 hour a day job. Um, and I didn't really come home and go back and come home and go back. And I didn't study until like 10 o'clock at night and I didn't hang out. You know, I was sort of like, these are the hours that I'm working. And when I'm not at school, then these are the hours that I'm not at school and I can be with my family. So I think that came a little bit with being a little bit older and having a family and having to juggle those things. 
So if do you think that if you could, um, you would have just done medical school directly? Or do you think those that gap um, years like helped you? Yeah, I think that's a million dollar question. My dad continues to ask me that even to this day. And I'm like, what does that matter? I'm happy and I have a job that I love. But I do sometimes wonder, I think um, I don't think I would have been as organized if I had gone straight from college to medical school. I think that, um, I mean, obviously in college I studied hard and I got good grades. But um, I still felt like I had a tendency to kind of procrastinate a little bit or I'd kind of like just do stuff when it came time to do it. And so being a little bit older, I had worked for a few years. Like I said, I was married, I had a baby. I think ironically having those outside expectations allowed me to be a little more organized and structured in my studying. And like I said, you know, it may not work for everybody but it seemed to work for me that maybe a combination of being a little bit older and having expectations than just being a medical student helped me focus a little bit more on that aspect. So I think it, I think I, I think I did better in medical school than I would have if I didn't have those other outside expectations. Yeah, absolutely. I think for everyone, it's just like tailored in their own path. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So the next question is, what do you think is the best aspect of being in family medicine? Like what's the most rewarding part of being in family medicine? Yeah, um, I, I really think, and again, this sounds kind of a, like a cliche, but I really think the most rewarding part about family medicine is I have the privilege of really getting to know my patients in a lot more depth than a specialist might. Um, and don't get me wrong, there are a lot of specialists who really work hard to get to know their patients, but um, there was another when I because like you'd be in the hospital for half a day and then you'd rush to see patients in the clinic and you always felt like you were being pulled in a million directions. And I remember towards the end, one of the one of the faculty had said, he said, you know, here's the thing, when you get out into practice, you're not gonna feel so much pressure to do everything at any one visit. You get to trust that you are a family doctor and your patients are gonna come back to you. So even if you don't get like, if, if a patient has like 18 medical problems and at any given visit, you only get to three or four of them, they're gonna come back to you time after time and you're gonna build on that relationship and over time, maybe something that they weren't really interested in addressing at a previous visit, you know, like it's no big deal. I think I can get to that at a future visit. Now, obviously there's urgent things that have to be taken care of sometimes like right away, but for some of these like long-term health plans, you have the luxury of your patient saying, you know, you know what, I'll come back. There's, you know, you're my doctor and I'm gonna be back and I think family physician is that long-term relationship that you have with people. Absolutely. It sounds like family medicine is something that people like probably for more interaction, I think family medicine would be a really good um, speciality because you get to interact with people a lot and make that bond, like you said. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But along with that, what do you think is the toughest aspect of family medicine? <laughs> Yeah, I think the toughest is almost the flip side to that coin, right, is, um, you know, you're pretty good at almost everything, but you're not an expert in anything. And there are some times that your patients look to you and they expect you to be an expert um, or they expect you to maybe take on more than you were trained to take on. So I think the hardest part in family medicine is being comfortable with, um, I think it's a little combination of, you need to be comfortable with end, but you also need to be willing to push your boundaries a little bit more. I think sometimes when people spend a lot of time in family medicine, we kind of just say, well, I don't know that. So I'm just gonna stick with what I know. And being a good doctor is really about spending your whole life learning and pushing yourself to, to learn more every day. 
So you kind of have to be comfortable with like, this is how much I know. Is it safe for me to try to learn more or is it safer for me to have this patient see a specialist, at least for the time being? Kind of learning where your safe boundaries are, but also not being so caught up in your boundaries that you end up constricting your ability to care for your patients. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a very critical aspect of family medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what kind of, so I think you kind of touched on this before, but what kind of education like and training did you have to prepare for? So like um, medical school, of course. And other than that, what would you suggest for like high school students who are possibly looking into the future, trying to plan it out? Like how would you plan the years? Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, I, I, I spent a fair amount of my time doing more like, um, I guess, liberal arts as my undergrad. So I was lucky enough to go to a liberal arts school that had a really good science department. So I the humanities, but also had some really good solid framework with science. Um, so trying to strike a balance between um, kind of pushing yourself from the science standpoint, but also not forgetting some of those aspects of your mind and your brain that allow you to be a well-rounded person. Um, I, I did go to public health school before I went to medical school. Um, I don't know in hindsight that that was essential, but it did I think for me, not all healthcare was being a doctor and that there are a lot of people doing a lot of work in healthcare that weren't physicians. And so, you know, at the end of it, I ended up wanting to go to medical school anyway, but it was a nice eye opener for me. And I would say, I would say about a third of my classmates went into public health school thinking they wanted to go to medical school and they decided at the end of it that they felt like there were other aspects of healthcare that, you know, met that need for them and they chose not to go to medical school. So means in the bigger sense, um, because A, it'll just help, you know, in my case, it solidified the fact that like, nope, I really do want to be a doctor at the end of those couple years. Um, so I thought that that was helpful. And then, um, I mean, a lot of people have said that maybe volunteering in um, like in an assisted living center or a nursing home, I did a fair amount of that. Even it wasn't even part of my grand plan, but I ended up doing it like in college. Um, I worked summers at a nursing home in their activities department, kind of um, getting some of those interactions with patients. And that was nice too, because you just felt like you didn't have to be their doctor or do anything medical. You could just kind of interact with them. And it did help me feel a little more comfortable um, kind of interacting with older people, people with a lot of medical problems. And those were people I really didn't spend a whole lot of time with before. So um, I think it was good for me to just have those social interactions in the healthcare setting without the pressure of being their doctor just yet. So those were helpful for me. Absolutely. Yeah, I thank you for that advice. I'm sure a lot of us um, are wanting to plan ahead. So thank you so much. Um, the next one that I have is, what is your advice to high schoolers contemplating a medical pathway? Like what, so a lot of high school students right now are thinking that because of COVID, like how it impacted the medical field, um, they're kind of scared. So how would you advise them to like, you know, go into especially family medicine, which is one of the front lines. Um, how, how would you advise them? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I feel like um, at a lot of points along the way, um, how should I put this? I would meet like in high school, I would talk to people I knew that were physicians and they would be like, oh, it's so hard. Yeah, I kind of really think I want to do that. <laughs> and then in college, there was a lot of like, do you really want to go to medicine? I mean, what if you just did biology or something like that? Um, 
And even in public health school and even in medical school, there was a few people that were like, well, I don't know why you'd want to be a family physician. You should probably do cardiology, you know, where you could really help people more. So, I mean, I think that it's a tough one because on the one hand, as a student, you want to be, a, you assume that if you talk to people who are in that, like this positive image of what they're doing. And it was a little bit of an eye opener for me in my journey to realize like, huh, not every doctor is actually happy being a doctor. What's going on here? So I think that, um, you know, again, it kind of goes back to like being a little bit confident in what, what drives you personally, and then finding people that kind of feed into that. Um, like, you, if you just kind of talk to just random doctors, you're going to find some that are a little bit more or maybe burned out. And so um, if you're not really kind of confident that physician or medicine is where you want to go, it's easy to have people like that kind of push back at you and make you doubt things. Um, and so it's important, I think, to find people that um, kind of convey the positive aspects of medicine. I will say it's tough to be a doctor now, but I also think it's always been tough to be a doctor. It's just different, you know, like think back to 150 years ago where you were like driving your horse and buggy from house to house with for them. And most of the time you were just doing the best you could. So I think that at every step along the way, it's, you know, medicine has never been easy, but I think that most people who do it would say that it's on some days it's a job and on, but deep down, it's also a calling. And if you feel like that's your calling, then you really have to try to let people who maybe aren't as, you know, if they're not in a good place and if they're not happy with their job, then you might need to kind of keep looking and finding people that are still looking at it like this is my, hey, I could have a really bad day and come home not happy. But, you know, in general, I feel like this is something that it's important to me. It feeds my values. It helps me live my life um, the way I kind of envision my life being. And um, so, yeah, but it's certainly not, it's certainly not easy, um, but it's never been easy. So COVID is, I think, just another wrinkle in the medicine isn't easy kind of, <laughs> kind of mindset. Um, you never really as a physician felt like your health, your personal health was in jeopardy by taking care of patients recently. I mean, there has always been doctors who like worked with tuberculosis that got tuberculosis or people who worked with um, x-ray technology that before they knew about how to protect you and you ended up getting exposed to x-rays. I mean, so medicine has never been a, a perfectly easy or safe field, but it, I would say COVID is probably in recent memory, it's been the most recent experience where risks to my own health that I'm taking on by taking care of patients. And I think probably people under the age of 60 haven't really had to face that in healthcare the way that people maybe two or three generations ago had to face. So I think this is just kind of our generation's, you know, um, health, you know, occupational hazard that we're facing. And so we kind of have to all learn how to deal with it. I don't know that that was the best answer for you. I'm sorry. It is. It absolutely is. Because I know a couple of people who are just like, oh my gosh, because of COVID and I'm just scared to go in. And I think the way that you pointed out that medical was never an easy field, it just it just makes it clear that, you know what, if you want to go into medical, you have to be like willing to do service and um Put others in front of you because like mm -hmm. if you can't medical is probably not for you so that, that right, was right. yeah and I don't think you have to be I mean this is where a physician friend of mine would kind of cringe whenever they were stuck healthcare hero and her issue was like I don't want to be a hero a hero is someone who like actually like actively gets hurt in the process of trying to help other people and you know so no one's expecting a doctor to be a hero so I I think that we kind of have to be careful with some of those labels is you don't have to, you don't have to lose yourself in the process. Um, but I think for me, I feel like living those actions and, you know, I, I feel like I'm not losing myself in the process. I'm actually tapping into who I really am. Exactly. And I think, I, you know, that, things are a lot safer to be a physician nowadays. 
yeah yeah and i think yeah that's that's perfect because um a lot of people do think that as you're studying in medical school even that you're losing personality you become rigid but i mean just like you said you don't have to lose yourself you're kind of understanding more about yourself through the whole journey so mm -hmm. that was yeah cool. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us today, Dr. Falaroni. It was a pleasure meeting you. And um, thank you so much for just taking your time to just talk to us. Yeah, I'm so happy that you were able to find um, a group with your school that has like-minded people. And I mean, I have to say <laughs> that I didn't do any of this when I was in high school. Like I didn't join any clubs. I didn't join, I wasn't, you know, I was, you know, I kind of think back to like when I was halfway through medical school, I'm like, how did I even get here? Because I apparently didn't do any of the right things, <laughs> but somehow it worked out and I'm really, so there's a lot more people that are a lot more organized in kind of finding their path than I was. I kind of bounced around a lot, but I think we all end up where we're supposed to end up regardless. So um, but it's good that you have like like-minded friends um, with your school and you have mentors and teachers that are supportive of you. So I think that's wonderful. Good. Thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was a pleasure talking to you. And I'm sure a lot of us learn more about family medicine than just the fuzz of like just going for a wild child checkup. So <laughs> thank you so much. Um, have a great day. For asking you to do this. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. You as well. Thank Bye. You. Bye.